let's now move to a multinomial uh, classification. And here we are going to use a very famous uh, uh, database that is the iris uh, uh, flower measures. So we have um, uh, several measures of uh, uh, botanical uh, uh, characteristics of, uh, of the flower. And our uh, label is in terms of the species, the actual species that the plant is. So uh, uh, again, this is already in the BetML uh, uh, package. And uh, you can see here that we have uh, five columns. The first four are uh, the, the measures and uh, the fifth one is uh, the, the speeches. Again, this is not shuffled, so let's gonna randomize, otherwise it's too, too easy. It will be a little bit cheating. And let's gonna take the first four characteristics as the X, X and the fourth one as uh, the y. Before uh, we, we do it, we, we map uh, the, the, the text to some uh, integer value so that the output is in terms, is numerical and is the, the so with one representing setosa, two vicicolor and three virginica. Again, as before, we are going to, uh, to partition. We don't need to shuffle because we already shuffle here, so no need to shuffle it again. And uh, okay, here the, the Y is, uh, um, is a categorical. So before we, we, we run it, the model, we need to make a uh, one hot encoder of uh, the, the categories. So we are going to get to change our uh, one to three to uh, uh, a matrix to for each record a vector where uh, uh, one if it is was one is the first column if it is was two is the second column and the three of course the third column here so this become a, um, our white become a matrix that's gonna do the same things uh, as uh, we did uh, earlier. So the first is a dense layer. How many input the dense layer? How many metrics, how many dimensional uh, uh, it has our, our input? Our input has four dimensions. So the first will be a four uh, uh, network, four, uh, four nodes. And we take 10 as uh, um, as intermediate uh, uh, as the nodes of the hidden layers and we use a relu. Then the, our output, how many dimension it is. Our output is a three dimensions because it can be any of this column. So uh, we, the last layer will ha need to have a three, uh, three, uh, uh, three columns and uh, in case of uh, uh, multinomial classifications the last layer is called the vector function layer because it take and process this activation function that for multi classes the softmax uh, so the softmax is a uh, functions that uh, uh, transform a vector in a uh, vector uh, in a PDF in a, a probability a density a probability mass function because it is uh, is um, is discrete so uh, it transforms uh, a vector in a probability uh, that sum to n and with all uh, non-negative uh, numbers and uh, these functions normally the active action function is uh, applied to each, um, each uh, nodes individually of the layer. Well, here with the vector function layer, it is applied to all the nodes at the same times. So here we have uh, uh, our dense layer, but need to uh, our hidden layer, but need to have 10 as input. And here need to have already the number of nodes in output because this vector function layer doesn't change the dimensionality with respect to the previous layer. So here we already have to have uh, the number of uh, nodes in, uh, in output as the number of, uh, of uh, dimension in output. And finally, we make our uh, uh, network and we specify because is a, we could also use, it doesn't change nothing, and we could also use uh, um, 
the uh, squared cost function but uh, in uh, uh, more typically is used the cross entropy that is a logarithmic uh, functions and we give it a name So here we use cross entropy, we are not using the squared cost. And uh, finally we can uh, train the model. We are trained, so often it's nicely to scale, when they are not scalable already, to scale the input. So here we are training the model by first scaling the, the x and uh, we give as uh, the the y our label the one notch encoded matrix and here it should uh, uh, train the the model okay it was uh, fast so if you want to know which is the output of this uh, um, this uh, model you can always uh, run predict over some data for example here i'm uh, running predict of my neural network and i'm taking the first uh, uh, the first uh, x in the training set and i'm giving i'm trans i'm transposing because the input must be a vector a row vector and uh, here i am returned with the probabilities of this uh, uh, this x uh, s with respect to the three speeches so the second speeches you can see here that is almost dominant uh, is uh, very sh pretty sure that is uh, the uh, the she color okay so let's gonna try again so when we predict uh, actually here I should sca scale it. S I didn't because the model it work on uh, scaled uh, uh, on scaled uh, uh, data, and I have a completely different result. So I was a little bit wrong. Uh, I should uh, I should have run it at this one because the model is uh, uh, worked, has been trained over scaled data, so as well I should uh, scale it. Actually here there is another problem, but uh, scale work uh, and create some uh, uh, scale to uh, zero uh, uh, mean and one standard deviations, but the way it has been scaled, um, it depends on the data, so here uh, scaling on only one data you use you, you scale you risk to scale uh, using different uh, uh, different uh, coefficients so when you run uh, when you scale over uh, several decades several uh, tens of data it's not a problem because you get the same they are shuffled so the scale is the same but when uh, if you plan to scale on a single data you should first uh, save the scaling uh, factors with get uh, uh, scaling factor and then you should scale again with the same scaling factors or you risk uh, to not be able to, to get the data that you want. Uh, so here we predict using scaling again we don't need the scaling factor because uh, on average this will be the, 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 the same over many many data so we predict uh, and uh, just to be curious now, I want to see the first one. Uh, yes, the first uh, uh, X-train. You can see that I have a very different results than the one I have here. So again, uh, I don't know if I has been uh, uh, clear. The problem here is that we are run, we did scale the, uh, the training set. To scale the training sets, uh, at the end we are going to use some scaling factors, it's a linear uh, scaling but still I have some, some coefficient of scaling and uh, here I didn't save them uh, but when I apply here scale to a single record of course the scaling factors that I will apply are com may be completely different than the one that has been employed here so if I 
if I wanted to do things correct here, I should have, uh, instead of scaling here, I should have uh, getting the scaling factor, saving them, scaling, uh, transforming with these scaling, specific scaling factors, and as well use the same scaling factors uh, to transform here. If I have several, uh, many, many data, on average, the scaling factors doesn't change. And so I don't need to, to employ specifically to be explicit and using the scaling factors. So here is the same for a uh, uh, wide test for, uh, oh yeah. So I can't put the accuracy for the train is very good. So, and here again, I'm gonna give you some, um, some optional parameters. So I, by default, uh, I didn't have to specify this one. They are the, the default, but what are these? Well, here we are doing a classification where we know the labels. So we already have uh, the, the labels that one is Tosa, two is Vesicolo, three is Vichy, Virginica. Sometimes you need to compute the accuracy when you do not have lead labels and that's when you are using clustering algorithm and so this in your labels it hello you is very nice because i don't know other uh, uh, libraries that have this it hello you to compute the accuracy uh, making different kind of uh, permutations but is it you you compute the accuracy of the 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 of the um, prediction with your uh, actual uh, uh, data when the cluster results doesn't know which is the the cluster uh, uh, the cluster output and the tolerance is uh, but sometimes uh, you are not interested to get only the, the first one, the, the mode. So here you are, uh, the results is a probabilities and it tell you that you are very, for example, here, you are, uh, uh, you are sure, you're not very sure which is the first one. You are, you are giving a little bit more weight here, but it could be also this one. But here you say really is not the third one. Is This one is definitely is not this one. Sometimes you are interested to get the one I have the highest uh, um, probability, but sometimes you are in a situation depending on your task where you are happy to having the first uh, two highly ranked, uh, uh, highly ranked uh, um, labels to be to be correct. So you can increase the tolerance using this parameter here. To be precise, these ignored labels here is useful when you are running. Um, unsupervised uh, algorithm but you are actually testing them in a situation where you do actually have the labels so you are uh, you are testing a clustering algorithm and then you compare with the true labels to see if the your clustering algorithm has been able to recognize the, the structure in your data but of course the clustering algorithm assign the labels uh, randomly and so with this in your the labels, it allow you to make this comparison, whatever is the way that the clustering algorithm has classified uh, uh, your cluster, one to three or three to one or whatever. At this point, we have a very good uh, uh, train accuracy, uh, even more test accuracy. Let's gonna see a confusion matrix. Uh, uh, we're gonna do it on train because on test it doesn't make sense as it all classified all correctly so we give some uh, uh, we we make confusion matrix between the um, the ex, uh, predicted and uh, and the true value and we also give here the name of our labels and uh, after we obtain the object we can print it and uh, the confusion matrix should be something like that, where we have the true classes against the predicted one. So we see that for in the training case, the problem was some Vashi color that has been falsely um, classified as Virginica and a few Virginica as a Vashi color. Conversely, the Setosa are, seems to be pretty different. And here we print some statistics.
of the classes of the of the of the result.